Warning, the following podcast just gets more vulgar from here. And even in this warning, I'm probably going to say fuck. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by the new Connoisseur's Magazine Guide to Transubstantiated Jesus Blood. It's Sacramental Wine Spectator. Tired of using boxes of Franzia for your Catholic services? Looking for the perfect pairing to go with magical Triscuits? Can't decide what's the best year? Well, it's 33 AD, and we've got lots of other fun facts, too. Sacramental Wine Spectator. The best way to impress a 14-year-old girl with your wine knowledge on a Sunday morning. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Greetings and salutations from Canada. I am Kevin, the host of the Left of the Valley radio podcast. Now I know you Yanks think that Canadians are igloo-dwelling maple syrupy ice holes spawned from the unholy alliance of polar bears and beavers. But in fact, we too evolve from filthy monkey men. Hey! It's Thursday. It's football. And John Kasich got mad at the wrong fictional wizard. I'm no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from New York, New York, and Secret Lair, Pennsylvania, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, the movie Room becomes a religious documentary. Kevin Sorbo masters a British aphasia accent for an upcoming role. <laughs> and the Quran continues to be a guy not knowing where to just go with etc. But first, the diatribe. You know, Christianity could make my job a lot harder if they would just stop venerating horrible shit. They venerate a God that throws baby drowning temper tantrums and condemns adolescent girls to sex slavery. They venerate a savior who violently loses his shit at the forex, then takes his anger issues out on innocent date trees. They venerate a book that endorses slavery, child abuse, homophobia, witch hunting, genocide, and the list goes on and on. I mean, there are moral books out there. If, if you just took a book at random, you know, if they said, okay, we're going to switch to this new one. Now, uh, ready player one is the inerrant word of God. It's almost impossible that they would land on a less moral book in this scenario. Of course, one way or the other, that would be bad. You know, one way or the other saying, hey, this set of claims over here is sacred and can't be questioned. That's going to lead you down a bad road and we'd have to push back against it. But they could at least try to make it hard on us by starting with better shit. Like, how about any of the books that doesn't endorse murdering gay people, any of them, and almost all of them don't when you come right down to it. And, you know, whenever I air this complaint, some people accuse me of, you know, trying to fight last millennia's battles. A lot of religion's defenders would rightly point out that even the biblical literalists aren't taking the Bible literally. They may pretend that they believe in Noah's Ark, but even Ken Ham stopped short of stoning his kids to death for disobedience. You know, they would point out that the Bible has stayed the same, but the interpretation has evolved, and the stuff that Christians venerate today is much less morally reprehensible, which is a claim that'd be a lot easier to take seriously if they hadn't just made a saint out of Mother Motherfucking Teresa. Now, I, I want to start with an apology, because I know a lot of you already know what a sadistic fuck Mother Teresa was, and I'm not going to sum it up any better than Hitchens did, but I'm amazed how often I come across people, even in the secular world, who still seem to think that this miserable bitch was some kind of moral icon. So let's start at the beginning. For all practical purposes, the legend of Mother Teresa begins in 1969 when some documentarian doesn't realize his DP is using an experimental low-light film stock. Right, He sees some shots later inside a dark orphanage that look really well lit and decides it can only be a miracle from heaven, the divine light of God radiating from Mother Teresa. And that's too stupid to believe, but whatever. It allows him to market his documentary as containing the first miracle ever captured on film, so he ran with it. And of course, the Catholic Church's PR machine was cool with that. Keep in mind that they knew about all the kid fucking even way back when, so anything to keep everybody's eyes on Calcutta, right? So, so they promoted this nun as like the paragon of virtue and charity, and they were so damn successful that when I first heard heard Hitch talking shit about her, I was like, dude, come on, you're fighting a losing battle here. I mean, the phrase, blank is no Mother Teresa, but that, that was common parlance, and it was by no means limited to Catholics. In 1979, she wins the Nobel Peace Prize for, quote, work undertaken in the struggle to overcome poverty and distress, end quote, which is the exact opposite 
of what she actually did. Right? By her own admission, she had no interest in ending poverty or alleviating suffering since both of those things bring a person closer to God. Her legacy isn't one of engaging in charity. It's one of perverting charity and subverting charity. She drew in volunteers and donations under the guise of altruism, sure, but her goal wasn't to help people. It was to make Christians, specifically to make poor and suffering Christians. By the time she died in 1997, she was running over 500 missions in 100 different countries, and by all credible accounts, the conditions in those places were deplorable. More than one objective reporter compared them to concentration camps. You have stories of kids tied to their beds, dying people given nothing but aspirin and baptisms that they didn't ask for, hypodermic needles being rinsed in cold water and then reused, expired medicines being administered to patients, people shitting on the floor for lack of anywhere else to do it. I'm not talking about some Victorian era mental asylum here. This shit was going on the year I got married. And look, we we have this tendency to imagine medical facilities in really poor countries and, and we're inclined to forgive that lack of sanitation, right? We're inclined to say, well, shit, you know, they're making do. But that was not the case with St. Ratchet's hospitals. Her charity had more than enough money to provide, if not modern care, at least much better care, but she chose not to because in her words, quote, there is something beautiful in seeing the poor accept their lot, to suffer it like Christ's passion. The world gains much from their suffering, end quote. She literally chose not to give painkillers to people in pain because dying of cancer brought them closer to Jesus. Now, of course, by all accounts, she wasn't quite as committed to this suffering shit when it was her turn to die. Apparently, she was plenty close enough to Jesus already. So when her ticker started to go, she treated herself to top flight medical treatment in the good old U.S. of A. So implied in the whole how awesome or miserable poor people thing is an unspoken addendum about it being way more awesome if you don't have to be one of them. This fucking cunt took money from fascist dictators. She took money from notorious frauds. She diverted hundreds of millions of dollars of charitable donations for some global Tuskegee experiment with only the control group. She was basically a demon overlord shy of being a Lovecraft villain and this person they call a saint. Now, you know what? Let's set aside the absurdity of the whole process of canonization for the time being because I'll run out of breath eventually. But suffice to say, in order to take it seriously, you have to believe that a picture of Mother Teresa shot a magical laser into a lady and excised a tumor that her doctor said she never had. So even if they do manage to find a Catholic worth praising, they have to taint their legacy with some credulous investigation of a crazy person's miracle claim. The end result is mainstream news outlets pretending to take claims of posthumous wizardry seriously for the purposes of a fluff piece about a fanatical sadist. I mean, this can't possibly be the best they have, can it? I'm sure the average Catholic has fewer skeletons in their closet than this morally perverse zealot. But I guess for the people making decisions at the Vatican, didn't rape any kids that we know of seems like a pretty high bar to clear. So they'll call her a saint, despite the fact that she is to humanitarians what the Bible is to codes of ethics. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the spick and span of secularism, Heath and Wright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, who wants to be the duration and who wants to be the racial epithet? Eli, you said your laptop was off. How would he know that? It was. That's the screensaver. I'm <laughs> In our skeptical. lead story tonight, apparently I didn't get myself worked up into a sufficient rage talking about that leathery sadist in the diatribe because I'm going to start the headlines off with an evil bitch that beat her kid with a coat hanger for Jesus. All right, so this story started back in February when Indiana resident Kin Pat Dang was arrested for felony abuse and neglect of her seven-year-old son. Her defense at the time was the opposite of the devil made me do it, citing Proverbs 23, 13, and 14, and Samuel <laughs> Butler, but she meant Proverbs 13, 24. <laughs> well, as it turns out, her lawyer has elected to run with her the voices in my head have no reason to lie argument, citing Indiana's notorious Rifra bill in her defense in documents filed last week. Yeah, there is no Satan made me do it, but there is a God made me do it Mm -hmm. law, so let's use that one. I feel like this lawyer probably should have spent time not thinking of extra creative defenses of this woman. (laughs) You know, maybe get a hobby. Ping pong. I hear that's fun. Ping pong's fun. Uh, Uh, Also, uh, if you are going to get creative like that, at least have better timing. Uh, I mean, Adrian Peterson turned out to be a huge (laughs) bust for me (laughs) in the 2014 draft. This really doesn't help anyone at this point. (laughs) In a serious way. I'm serious about this all felony fantasy league. Yeah, points for unpunished felonies, wave of the future. Anyway. Oh, kind of like fantasy now, league. Ooh, ooh, I call swimmers. I call swimmers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Coop first overall. Now, I, I want to preempt the defense because I know I'm going to get an email or two bitching at me for using such an extreme example because, yes, you know, this, this woman's probably mentally ill or whatever, and, yes, yeah, she's probably going to be punished for this regardless of her invocation of Rifra. And some people will say, hey, you know what? There's enough bad shit about religion that you don't have to go reporting on every extreme example of a crazy person that does a crazy thing and then says God afterwards. But among the bad things about religion is the part where they hand a book to crazy people that says beat your kids real good and then tell them that demons will eat their flesh for eternity if they don't obey it. Yeah, and if I can add to that, the problem is if this woman had said the chicken bones fell this way and that's why I hit my kid, she'd be getting the treatment she needs. But because both but, medically right. and societally there are bullshit rules about religious delusion, it's even more important to talk about, again, both from a caring humanistic healthcare perspective and a go fuck yourself religion perspective. They, yeah, they right. work both yeah. ways. Absolutely. And also with the chicken bones, at least some of the time it tells you not to physically abuse your child. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Bible's 100%. Yeah. I mean, point being, if we're not going to poison all the Bibles with green vapor like the original plan, <laughs> and honestly, I like the original plan, um, but if that's not happening, I, I think it, it needs like a, a built-in spinner on the Bible <laughs> or like a magic eight ball or something. Like, should I throw my child against these rocks? Huh, doubtful. Okay, good. like that would improve things at that least somewhat, actually would. sometimes. Yes. You're lucky this shit says ask again later, Timmy. Put my belt back. <laughs> and in, man, it's nice to talk about silly religious news from Scandinavia news tonight. <laughs> Despite being in the top 10 most atheist countries in the world, Iceland ventured into the public eye this week to prove what everyone who has an aunt who's into crystal healing will tell you. Just because you don't believe in God doesn't mean you can't believe in silly, silly shit. Yeah. Uh, okay, I feel like that was directed at me. Is that your way of telling me I should finally go see a doctor about the Lyme disease? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Using your legs is overrated. Okay. okay. It's been fun. So what silly shit do I mean? Elves. And I'm going to say that again because I don't believe it. Elves. Elves. <laughs> yes. Last week, the Mergen Blooded Daily reported that a construction <laughs> project on a highway in Reykjavik had to be delayed while a sacred elven stone was uncovered. <laughs> what? You know, I feel like the whole series really went downhill with the backhoes of Shannara. The backhoes of Shannara is my erotic yeah. lot lizard slash dwarven erotic fantasy <laughs> fiction. <laughs> well, right, and it went downhill from there. I don't mind saying. I didn't want notes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the, the head of this construction company, Sven Zupfheisensen, who works for the Boss, okay, road construction company, told the paper his woes began in August in 2015 in Shigujifuga. Fuck you. Fuck you. That word is spelled S-I-G-L-U-F-J-O-R-D-U-R. It's a made up fucking language. How does that evolve, huh? Huh, John McWhorter? <laughs> Cavemen all had a mouthful of taffy for a thousand years? I bet they all speak English when we leave. Sorry. Sorry. Anyways, the woes began when in the process of doing some work on a highway, an earth slide covered up the, quote, elfin lady stone, end quote. Late? What? Oh, okay, but don't they have statues of Bjork, like, all over the place? How important <laughs> is this one? one it, really? Well, well, and also, I don't want this to slip by here. The important detail. If a dude ever elects to attribute a gender to a rock, it's because he fucked it. You know, so clearly that's how this started. Dude's boss caught him fucking a rock. He's about to fire him. So Svein introduces the fucking Icelandic riffer or whatever. And he says, I sincerely believe that it is a lady rock and she consented. And, and then it all just spirals out of control from there. I see how we, I see how we get there. This is what we're looking at, Indiana. <laughs> it's the it's the Russian floating sex doll angel of Iceland. <laughs> exactly. Everyone just keeps playing along. Okay, so listen to this. Once the stone was covered, the road flooded. Machinery broke down, a contractor was injured, and a visiting reporter fell into a mud pool and had to be pulled to safety. And with the evidence of this is just stuff that happens when you work around mud and shit not being sufficient, <laughs> the project was halted so that the rock could be, and I seriously quote, subsequently cleaned with a pressure washer last week, <laughs> end quote. Okay, well, I think they could use this as an opportunity to test out the elf magic theory. Like, just <laughs> clean off the rock almost all the way and see if someone, like, 
twists an ankle yeah. or <laughs> cracks a nail, then you know what you're dealing with. That's science. <laughs> Isolate some variables. Just the image of some poor guy standing there spraying down a magic rock, just like, really? Really, Sven? Yeah, man, just <laughs> wash off the rock. We're just, <laughs> this has all gotten way out of hand. By the way, <laughs> uh, 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 off the subject here, but somebody remind me to ask Andrew if Riffra applies to elf and lady crack. Oh, I hear Andy sells that to kids. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. It's true. <laughs> Luckily for Iceland, the elves don't seem to care who gay people marry, who gets health care, or tell people to hit their kids. So I'm going to go ahead and offer swapsies. Leave out some bread <laughs> or milk for them. Come on. Who's in it? Do this. <laughs> and in cloudy with a chance of lunatic fucking president news tonight, we have a follow up on a story from two weeks ago about how God communicates like uh an emotionally disturbed five-year-old with no language skills. <laughs> uh, much like Donald Trump, who yep. is also part of the story. <laughs> and, of course, I'm talking about how the creator of the universe likes to draw vague shapes in the clouds in order to send out important information. And one of his latest messages told us that Donald Trump is going to be the next president. Uh -huh. oh, that definitely, happened. definitely, definitely going to be president. I want to watch Wapner. I want to watch Bob <laughs> in 10 minutes. Okay, so here's the timeline of events. Last time we saw this happen, God drew the shape of Louisiana, sort of, mm. a little bit, um, which was clearly taunting the people who live there during the terrible floods they brought upon themselves with butt sex. Butt that sex. one makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, I get it. But this time, it's a little bit trickier. It appears that God drew a side profile of Donald Trump's face and... That's why Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, who, by the way, looks like Jeffrey Tambor fucked a copy of Atlas Shrugged, he <laughs> tweeted about how he's working for God's chosen candidate now. Uh, so for those of you who don't remember, Michael Cohen is the says who guy yeah, that's from him. a yeah. few weeks ago. So being super skeptical about all the polls does not preclude getting magic messages from Yahweh in the clouds for those <laughs> keeping track. <laughs> well, and to be fair, Nate Silver isn't even factoring in cloud omens because he's a communist and a Jew that hates <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, polls plus clouds isn't even an option on 538. No, no, exactly. <laughs> You're never going to get a job with Rasmussen if you don't learn the latest indicators. That's what we're <laughs> All right. So, so, so one anyway, guy, uh, one guy really <laughs> loves that right now. Rasmussen pulls. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> here's what we got from Michael Cohen. He, he sent out the image of the cloud along with the following caption, quote, in case anyone is unsure as to who will be our next hashtag POTUS, the Lord has chosen the people's messenger oh. end quote people's <laughs> messenger and i think he's confused because uh bernie sanders isn't even running anymore oh. which <laughs> did he mention any wars who started them uh, uh <laughs> nate silver also <laughs> in a related story if you're wondering who's going to win the contentious house race in iowa's third district local pareidoliologists are pretty confident <laughs> it's going to be garfield's uh sidekick odie but wearing a cape oh i believe the uh, word flowing. is paleontologists <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's what my spell check seems to think yes <laughs> yeah so uh i'm kind of skeptical about this whole thing uh first of all the picture looks less like Donald Trump and more like uh, Abe Lincoln getting attacked by a squirrel. Um, I guess I can see the confusion there, but but the beard should be a dead giveaway. Uh, let's let's all pay attention next time we tweet out about clouds. Uh, also, I don't think it's really fair to assume the cloud is Trump, considering his real life hair is made of condensed water vapor. It's going to lead to a whole bunch of false positives, obviously. And uh, one other problem: just the other day. I saw a cloud that had a picture of a woman in a pantsuit putting multiple cards into a ballot box in Pennsylvania. Oh, so it's really hard to say which way God is leaning at this point. Um, well, unless you look at poll numbers. <laughs> um, says who? it's kind of hard. Says who? Nate Silver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that really happened. <laughs> and in Ray's You Up news tonight... Apostle David E. Taylor, who looks like Stevie Wonder ate the rest of his beard during a famine, made some extra. He really does. He really I'm really does proud of that one. Exactly you should Google like it. I did a great job, guys. <laughs> made some extraordinary claims this week about his ability to heal people through Facebook. Sure. 
Yes. Hmm. According to Joshua Media Ministries International Facebook page this week, David E. Taylor commanded what I assume is an old Asian lady based on the picture on the Facebook to come back to life after she had been dead for 40 minutes by, quote, sending her a text message through Facebook, end quote. Uh, wait, 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 I'm guessing yeah. he tried to send her an email through Twitter and a voicemail through MySpace <laughs> first, but this is the one that did it, you know? That's eventually. Yeah. Probably took a few tries. He's uh, got a magical batting average that is not great. No. Um, yeah. For example, in 2014, this guy, David E. Taylor, claimed to have a divine prophecy that the Broncos would win the Super Bowl later that winter. Um, well, I mean, granted, he almost came within five touchdowns of being correct <laughs> in predicting the overwhelming favorite incorrectly, <laughs> but uh, it didn't work out. Um, I guess he's been practicing up now if he can resurrect people, so and, that's good. But also, just for the record, even if Zuckerberg added a resurrect the dead feature here, it would not be worth it for all the goddamn group messages people put you. If only two of you are talking, why are the other 11 of us tagged in on this shit? <laughs> I'm getting these alerts. I'm trying to fucking drive. Cut it the fuck out. Stop writing on Heath's wall. It confuses and frightens him. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wrote on my wall. I, I do have a Ratatouille poster, though. I, I have I more questions, not less. <laughs> <laughs> I like Patton. <laughs> According to the Facebook page, the unnamed woman who the ministry refused to allow the Christian Post to interview was dead for 40 minutes before I assume Taylor texted her, hey, cut it out, and she came back to life. <laughs> Additionally, according to the Facebook page, her diabetes is now cured. Okay, well, that's what I interpret by putting it through Google Translate. What the page <laughs> says is, quote, after clinical studies slash... They tried not to give her diabetic <laughs> pill, and guess what? Dash, she got healed from her diabetes as well. Ellipses, she doesn't need to take her medication no more. End quote. <laughs> her diabetes pill. Pill. Yeah. <laughs> we were also able to take the cast off her irritable bowel syndrome, and she doesn't need an inhaler for her erectile dysfunction anymore. So I could use one. <laughs> Depends on who's blowing into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not sure if they have that all correct. Um, it sounds like she has the same doctor as Donald Trump, though. Yeah, Donald so <laughs> and uh, I guess her diabetes test results were all positive. Yeah, might want to clarify. <laughs> might want to check I'm what that actually I'm convinced she's the most physically fit old lady to ever leave this hospital. <laughs> <laughs> And look, before our listeners rush out to call the Ministry for Miracle Healing, which happens to have a phone number on their Facebook page, <laughs> just saying, a quick reminder, David E. Taylor, aside from looking like the only black guy in Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band, was <laughs> the sub... He really does. He really does, guys. Uh, was the subject of a financial corruption case last year, which our listeners might remember from his fantastic deposition video in which he defended his elaborate spending at high-end clothing stores because, quote, Macy's don't have the kind of suits I wear, end quote. Yep. And to be fair, that's true. I've been to Macy's, they and they don't sell band leader uniforms or kindergarten parachutes. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, and quick, before you put together why Eli was shopping for band leader uniforms and kindergarten parachutes at the same time, we'll take a quick break and hand things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. Well, if the kids would start trusting ice cream men again, I wouldn't need to. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Unmarked ice cream. <laughs> a man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. It is a slut, right? Hey, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Massachusetts. Do you ever notice how much harder I go on women in this segment? Well, if you're Phyllis Schlafly's family, you're going to want to fast for it. Because in the words of Aeschylus, there is no disease that I spit on more than treachery. And while there have been many thoughtful, heartfelt posts lately about not speaking ill of the dead in relation to Phyllis's death, none of those were on the scathing atheist. So strap in and strap down because this bitch was my Scalia. And if you don't know who she is, good. Don't find out. Just go ahead and forget her. Please, I'm asking you, speed up the process of this horrible woman's legacy of misogyny and bullshit being forgotten forever so that she can be really and truly dead. But in case you needed a reminder, she was an anti-feminist, pro-life, anti-gay, bigoted piece of shit who looked like a badly colored inversion of Julie Andrews's corpse. 
And she spent her whole life saying mean shit so that sexist men had someone with a vag to validate their horrible opinions. Among the many wet, bloody farts that emanated from the baboon asshole she used for a mouth were her oppositions to the Equal Rights Act, gay marriage, evolution being taught in school, a woman's right to choose, and my personal favorite, her denial of the existence of marital rape. Seriously, here's the quote. By getting married, the woman has consented to sex, and I don't think you can call it rape. End quote. She was a miserable, inarticulate, insincere, cowardly horror of a woman who was just too stupid to know or too evil to care what kind of harm she did to women with her backwards-ass opinions. She helped create a legacy of craven, anti-feminist, pseudo-intellectual bullshit that lives on in the YouTube comments of the video version of this segment, I'm sure. Fuck you, Phyllis. Fuck your whole fucking life. Fuck you, fuck every asshole who will repeat your talking points in the name of misunderstood egalitarianism amidst a smelly basement, neck beardy debate on women's rights. But most of all, fuck every woman you inspire to make the world a worse place for women, just so that they can scrape together a modicum of attention under the misappropriated guise of being contrarian or skeptical. You don't deserve the spit that should line your grave. Now, while everyone goes, whoa, Lucinda, and I sing Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead, I'll go ahead and turn you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. Don't piss off Lucinda. Good. Put that down. <laughs> That's why I, I just get the purple stuff. She means grape when she says purple she stuff. She could hear you. <laughs> she could hear you. It's all about the Sunny D, man. Is that, is that what we're talking about? Phyllis Schlafly pickup lines. <laughs> it's all about the Sunny D. There's no line. You just wait till it gets dark. Get a shovel. Oh, God. <laughs> and in I Sent You the Boat in the Helicopter news tonight, the Murrow Indian Children's Home, who turned down $28,280 from atheist donors last week, had one of their staffers reach out on Facebook this week to tell her friends that they could really use some money <laughs> for the children. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Dear Facebook friends, if all these kids starve, there won't even be any atheist donations to discriminate against. Our very bigotry <laughs> is at stake here. Yeah. It's like panhandling for change while, like, Ed McMahon is standing right next to you with a six-foot-long check. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, but he he's an Irish. He's, a, <laughs> he's an Irish. Well, well, he is. <laughs> so, without any irony at all, this staff member took to Facebook to ask friends, family, and anyone who... I assume believes in the correct number of gods mm -hmm. to look into their hearts for the children. Some restrictions may apply. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to read the small print. And in their taking our hijabs news tonight, an Oklahoma man is outraged this week because he doesn't understand how equal signs work. This story comes to us from Norman, Oklahoma, where local resident Chad Grensky is demanding the removal of a picture on a government vehicle because, in his opinion, it illegally promotes religion. And no, this is not another story about some zealot sheriff putting Bible quotes on his squad cars because then the complaint would be sane. No, Grensky is pissed because the woman in this picture is wearing a burqa thus promoting the religion of Islam by acknowledging that it exists, which which brings me to a brand new segment of our show with Andrew that we like to call Nope. Andrew, is admitting something exists the same as illegally promoting it? Nope. Thank you, Andrew. And, and the whole thing is ridiculous because lots of people wear those ironically. Like, I've seen plenty of hipsters in burqas and fucking suspenders with douchey oh, yeah. phrases on <laughs> like, Allah Akbar, bitches, man. <laughs> <laughs> and most of those people aren't Muslim. Yes. Yeah. I brew my own non-alcoholic beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, according to reports, Grinsky wants to make it clear that he isn't racist. You know, the, the way that people who aren't racists often do before anyone accuses them of racism. Anyway, <laughs> the way he sees it, if you can't have police cars that say Jesus is the Lord on them, you also can't have a picture of a Muslim on a library truck because those things are the are similar are I, I, how would it work with jews would it depend on how jewy they work the black bars over the payas I, I don't get it. so uh, apparently you can't have a person that is a religion on an image or an atheist because then you would be favoring atheists too i yeah. guess no babies or dogs <laughs> right. yeah. it makes it kind of tricky uh, i was thinking um what if there was a picture of a box and it said don't read this. There might be a Muslim in there. That, that seems fair. <laughs> and even if he looks, I feel like the chance to kill the quantum maybe Muslim would sweeten the pot for this guy. So. Oh, yeah, that's true. Police cars just start riding around with bumper stickers that say Christians exist on them. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <'em>. Got him. <'em. laughs> 
<laughs> Don't give many ideas. <laughs> of course, now, the Norman Library is looking for the most diplomatic solution here, and we like to help where we can. So I do have a suggestion. Instead of finding a whole new model for a whole new ad, we could just find something that could cover up all the parts that Chad Grensky finds offensive, like a like a burka burka. Of course, <laughs> now that I think about that, some feminist is going to get pissed about all of that, so we'll have to cover that burka burka up with something and thereby create a whole new industry of forced modesty Russian nesting garments. Boom, save the economy. <laughs> You're welcome, America. <laughs> Night. Maybe the next bus could just be her being forced by armed police officers to show everyone her tits. I'm just spitballing here. I'm trying to think of... <laughs> Such a Francophile. Yeah, exactly. That gray matter. <laughs> and finally tonight, in God's Not Awful Movies News, uh, that should be the name of Kevin Sorbo's production company. It should. Would. Or maybe like, he's surely at least meh films or something. <laughs> a- anyway, it appears that Sorbo isn't making enough money as a, a model for enormous tweed jackets so his torso is going to be starring in another god-awful movie next year called let there be light Hooray. i'm so happy <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> apparently it's the story of a famous atheist author having a near-death yep. experience <laughs> and of course becoming a christian oh shit angry atheist professor that sees the light and turns to jesus angry atheist author that sees the light and turns to jesus is there any role this guy can't play <laughs> A lot of rain. You know, it, it's no accident that he was nominated for one consecutive online film and television association award 20 years ago. That didn't just yeah. happen. Yeah. An actor prepares to pretend to be smarter than he is. <laughs> Poorly. Yeah. So uh, according to Kevin's wife, Sam Sorbo, who also stars in this movie and sign. co-wrote the script. Oh, well, even better. Uh, here's how it all started in her head. She asked herself, quote, I wonder what would happen if the world's greatest atheist had a come to Jesus moment, what? end quote. Uh, not sure how she decided on those atheist rankings, but that's the plot. <laughs> and uh, as we all know, when you have a terrible traumatic experience, it creates a whole bunch of extra evidence to believe that an all powerful, all loving God is real. Oh, yes, of course. Especially if you're a world ranked atheist <laughs> right near the top. Speaking of which, have you guys heard how many gods Matt Dillahunty doesn't believe in? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I, I know he's number four on most of the draft boards, but fuck it. If I have first overall, you can have Krause it too. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, okay. 30 seconds on the clock. Things atheists and NFL football players have in common about elevators. Go. No, no, absolutely no. not. Dude, we had such a nice Go. two weeks. <laughs> Except for somebody pissed off at me trash talking Michigan. My Twitter was so quiet. Uh, I don't know what that means. Anyway, <laughs> this brings us to a, a big pet peeve of mine. We're talking about a perfect example of how this entire genre of movies is wildly offensive but it almost never gets mentioned. Right. I mean, imagine if this was about a famous Jewish author instead of an atheist. Like, right. Like, imagine if this was a story about Anne Frank and how she realized one day that Judaism was causing all her problems. <laughs> so she converts to Christianity and survives the Holocaust. Uh, that movie would be a medium level hate crime. That joke is a <laughs> medium level hate crime. Pretty close. Oh, but if the character is an atheist, somehow it's pretty much fine. And it's such a ridiculous double standard in society that plenty of atheists don't even notice how terrible this message is. Right. So, um, just in case anyone couldn't find a good reason to avoid Kevin Sorbo movies, uh, <laughs> I, think I found one for you. <laughs> well That's done. good. But, uh, regardless, this guy's horrible acting is a big part of our business model. And that's why we're going to go ahead and put 30 seconds on the clock ideas for the next Kevin Sorbo movie. Go. All right. Grab a pen, Sam. Despite a lifetime of devotion to Tibetan Buddhism, the 14th Dalai Lama always felt blue during the holidays, until one day when he realized that his was an evil pagan faith. Coming December of 2016, have a jolly dolly Christmas. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. Oh, how about this? Uh, Francis Collins was a man without hope in a world without God, but one waterfall changed it all in a not-so-beautiful mind. <laughs> Um, how about, uh, it's 2016, and atheists still don't realize that semen is a person. <laughs> One brave man must fight back against the system. Coming soon, Unplanned Parenthood, a simple plan B. <laughs> Based on a terrifying story. Uh, when Richard Dawkins met his end, his brain was too far gone to say no to the Christian asshole pestering him to turn his life over to Jesus at the last second, so they spin it as a deathbed conversion in... A stroke of luck. Oof. That's really, 
really mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. How about this? Uh, <laughs> after years of criticizing Christian cinema, he finally found the film and the performance that changed his mind forever. This summer, the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. The money's right. I'll say I went to Harvard to bother people, too. So fuck you, Kelly Kohlberg. <laughs> fuck you. I'm coming for you, Kelly Kohlberg. <laughs> And I guess now that we've carved out a little more job security for GAM, I think our work here is done. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Uh, Fantasy felony. And when we come back, Lucinda will join us to wish that we'd gone with the Book of Mormon this year again. When we announced last week that Andrew was a new partner in the show, a lot of our listeners expressed interest in just what it was that Andrew would be doing. Now, aside from coming on as legal counsel for when we're eventually sued for something that Eli says, he's also helping us develop the show and grow it in a ton of ways that we know you're going to love. We couldn't be happier to welcome him on, and so to share in our excitement, we decided to give you a little behind-the-scenes sneak peek at the evolving dynamic of our company. So we recorded our first ever company meeting for your enjoyment. Well, gentlemen, we are now an official LLC, so if there are no further questions... Ooh, ooh, my turn, my turn. No, um, no, no, yeah. no. Okay, Don't. Andrew, thanks so much for seeing us. Really looking forward to working with you, dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very excited. Well, actually, I mean, Eli, if you, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. No, 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 don't, don't. That's a oh, Thank idea. you. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you, you, you brought a list. I did. Do not read the list. Please, Please don't do, did read you, it. Did you really get a list? No, no, I'm happy to give this a quick look see. Is is this in crayon? No, it is not. Well, I'm just going to leave it there on the table and not touch it anymore if that's all right with you. Um okay, so your first question seems to be uh, um how many murders? Just that, and then it looks like you drew yourself a coupon for one free murder and tried to forge my signature at the bottom. I object. Uh huh. In the future, Andrew has no T in it. Noted. Okay. Um, point two, after where you started to number them, is Heath has to give back the DVDs he borrowed after two weeks. Um, that, I, I don't know that I would put that in the operating agreement of the LLC. Dude, you live three hours away. I want to watch Goonies. I'm not done with it. Shuffle, shuffle. I have regrets. Um, okay, and then finally at the, at the bottom, you've just written dicks out for Harambe. I'm not sure what you want me to do about... Uh, that's your penis. Overruled! <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, fuck, what is that thing? Dude, not in the studio. It was such a nice two weeks. Are we what already going to... fuck? God damn oh, it. Oh, this? Are... This is Phyllis Schlafly. I, well, I can see that. It's, it's everywhere. Yep. I know most people think she's dead, but I sincerely don't. So here we are. Hi, Noah. I'm uh, Phyllis. Nice you, to meet it, you. It, that's Dude, there, terrifying. Uh, there's got to be a better way to make this point. Uh, yeah, all the ways, any, just any yeah. way possible, it, all the random. ways. What point? Just living my life the way Phyllis wants me to live. That it's not about what society thinks, it's about what God thinks. And that comes to life, medicine, or, you know, consent. Uh, you didn't. Man of my word. I'm calling Andrew. Ooh, FaceTime him. Hi, Andrew, it's me, Phyllis. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You know, for a second, I thought after I read that the first time, I thought, is Eli fucking her corpse on our show a little too much? And then I thought, nah. no, just the right amount. So actually. Just exactly. <laughs> exactly. Goldilocks it. <laughs> Found the zone, buddy. Good job. Media. When we first set out to read the Quran, we had all these plans and new segments for the show that could spin off of it. We figured that there'd be new skits reenacting bizarre Quranic tales, whole new slate of Quran stories for kids, not to mention the various diatribes its themes might inspire. But as we've been learning all year, there are no tales, there are no stories, and the only themes are, I can write good, do you guys remember the Bible, and fuck the Jews. And while that's plenty enough to carry a Mel Gibson movie, I don't mind admitting, <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to carry a tri-weekly segment with it yeah it started off like a drunk guy telling everyone at the bar about the glory days of killing jewish people and raping nine-year-olds yep. great... but it managed to go downhill from there which is <laughs> impressive now it's the same guy repeating the same stories 
but he didn't notice when everyone walked away and he just kept on going. Yeah, right. And now the bar's closed and he's talking to the dumpster out back, like poking <laughs> it. Listen to me. If you didn't like my bachelor party, you could have left it any time, Heath, okay? <laughs> <laughs> But guys, think of all the time we'll get to explain that we've read each chapter of the Quran with commentary and extensive thought, only for it totally not to matter, because we didn't read it in Arabic. Come on, that'll be yeah. fun, <laughs> right? Great. Huh? It's so clear. Twitter fights. And of course, this counts as <laughs> sickness and or health, so I've got Lucinda on a technicality here. Welcome back. See, Anna, it all starts off fancy dresses in Ireland, and a couple decades later, you're reading a deadly literate guy ran about Moses. <laughs> the dresses are Such mean. a cliche. <laughs> yeah. So, why don't you start us off with Surah 35, The Creator. All right. So, we start this one off with a bizarre visual. According to verse 1, angels have two, three, or four pairs of wings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, just... Start off picturing an eight-winged angel, and nothing else in this story will seem strange in comparison, I guess. Where do the other ones even go? Right. Well, I don't what's know. weird about this is, it, in my version at least, they don't tell us, like, why. It's not like, oh, warrior <laughs> angels get this many wings, and helper angels get this many wings. It's just like, look, <laughs> the angels, they come in three varieties. We got tall, we got grande, we got vente. This <laughs> one's just covered in wings. It's just a big pile of wings. We also get the uh, the dust and semen mixed thoroughly recipe mm -hmm. for making humans again. And I just want to point it out to underscore how disingenuous the Muslims are who claim this thing has science in it, right? 90% of the time when this book brings up how humans came into being, it starts with dust and then they quote the one mention that kind of gets it rightish. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm starting to see the pattern. Okay, so get, hear me out here. Jewish apologetics... Don't even bother lying. Like, yeah, eh, book says that, but it's uh, he was saying it to Larry, and it's in my perfect book of morality. <laughs> Christians, right. they lie, right? Uh, but in the way you can't prove. Like, oh, look at these people who believe Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead. Are they lying? But Islam is just like, yep, this book has all the parables in it, and babies are made out of fun dip. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the progression going. <laughs> Actually, recently, I've been picturing more like a... Like a white Russian with non-dairy creamer. Okay. Like mm -hmm. with a fetus inside. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one other thing on this verse, it, it says that nobody lives shorter or longer than Allah intended, uh -huh. except the people that do. It, right. But, but he writes their names in a book, which is super easy for him because he's omnipotent, except for when he's wrong and has to write. Why mention that? Like in case of an audit, <laughs> what do you have that book for? One you guy shall leave in bets. the corner. <laughs> like, well, remember me? I wrote it in the book. I wrote it in the book. <laughs> well, I also loved in verse twelve when you get an idea of Allah's geographic knowledge. He's doing an analogy between salt water and fresh water, but he seems to think that there are only two seas in the world. Yeah, right. Almost like a ten-year-old could prove this book wasn't divinely inspired or something. It's weird. <laughs> well, I know of at least one nine-year-old. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, she, she'd argue. <laughs> and uh, then in the next verse, we learn that God stopped the days from having the wrong amount of hours. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You know, because during the summer, there's more daylight, and if God hadn't subtracted that much extra time from <laughs> yeah. the night uh, everything would have been all fucked up apparently so he fixed it he was the one who figured out that a uh, hundred is the right percentage for whole things <laughs> oh, good god see. genius oh. it's more of that science and then we get more of the uh, well if there's no god why isn't everything the same color apologetic mm -hmm. which is honestly one of his strongest <laughs> yeah. yeah you don't want to forget that uh, all colors matter that's, mm -hmm. that's important <laughs> Oh, uh, he, right. that's your one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm going through our YouTube comments, and apparently we're only afraid to admit this is totally right because we won't debate a guy whose profile picture is anime boobs. Yes, that's so, <laughs> I'm torn. I'm torn. Yes, I understand it, yeah. And apparently that's the end of a thought or something, because now it's on to Surah 36, Yasin, Yasin. Yeah, and if we had to sum this one up in three words, they'd all be yada. <laughs> right. Yeah, ridiculous. Well, we did get some good news in verse 12, though, it kind of in a roundabout way. So it's telling us the same old shit about how we're all going to burn in hell if we don't start Musliming. But, but, but to bolster its warning, it says that all your deeds are recorded in, quote, a clear book. Mm. Now, that sounds bad until you consider that Allah considers the fucking Quran a clear book. <laughs> yeah, just imagine me at the gates of Muslim heaven, Muslim St. Peter's perusing a book that looks like Eli 
realize gam notes trying to figure out what it says on the <laughs> scathing athlete <Wait> a <laughs> says here you uh mesostrated on a chirk <laughs> i'm i'm at a loss honestly was someone eating wings while they wrote this <laughs> sorry and Reddit? sorry sorry it was, it was monday night <laughs> <laughs> what night. what no no don't run a spell check that'll that'll make it worse <laughs> um, I, I think that was i think that was supposed to be menstruated on a chicken but uh i was just making a note to myself um Fuck, did he just run past you? <laughs> that, is, that keeps happening. That That is on me again. And look, we don't say this often enough, but Muhammad is a fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. That's the end of our Christmas special. <laughs> yeah, we've learned something here today. Now, every single apologetic he offers assumes its premise, right? Every single one basically reduces to, well, if God doesn't exist, how do you explain the existence of God? And we're talking about a person so unfamiliar with thinking that he doesn't even know how it works. <laughs> yeah. Muhammad is to other religious authors as boxing commentators are to other sports commentators. Like, he punch, punch, make fall down. <laughs> <laughs> no, in a version of Madden football with Muhammad announcing, it's like, gotta watch the snap. Gotta watch. Here, here's a guy who sees worse because the Jews stole his eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and the result is God coming off as comically stupid. In verse 40, he has God saying, I've killed millions of people in an effort to prove I exist, and still nothing. Better kill some more. Yeah, right, right. I, I, I've i stacked up 80 Cheerios and still no world peace. <laughs> right. I was like, it's going to take 100. And, and our desperate efforts to catch Muhammad saying something different continue with Surah 37, the ranks, or those who set the ranks, or drawn up in ranks, depends on who you ask. Uh, yeah, it's pretty tricky stuff. They have no idea what the words mean. Okay, so I want to start with the exact words from the two different translations I'm using. One of them says, at the beginning here, by the aligners aligning and the drivers driving. Not Uh, not sure what that means, but um, the Saudi version says, by those angels ranged in ranks or rows, by those angels who drive the clouds in a good way. That doesn't even care. It's not even close. So... Apparently, Arabic words are just like vague suggestions, like a <laughs> script from Curb. But but that's no problem <laughs> when you're writing the clearest book in the universe. Apparently so. not. Yeah, yeah don't slow fine. you down a lick. No. And speaking of clearest book in the universe, it then goes on to tell us that despite the rumors we may have heard to the contrary, demons definitely can't hear what the angels in outer space are talking about. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yep. And if they do, God would set them on fire. Yes. Yes. So, right. Yeah, I was right. wondering what would He's happen. He's got a plan. He's got a magic missile which Jesus. which he follows up by saying like isn't that amazing and can you believe <laughs> other people think that's a silly thing to believe that the stars <laughs> are the cone of silence from get smart What's wrong with these motherfuckers? <laughs> and if, if you're thinking to yourself a uh, flaming space demons this chapter sounds promising then you've learned nothing from this yeah. segment because that's all we're going to hear about the flaming space demons and now it's back to well who the fuck do they think created the mountains and stopped the uh. earthquakes then he also introduces a new euphemism for dust, a la jacked off on in verse 12, when he <laughs> says humans were made from sticky clay. Oh, so sticky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently, the creation of human beings was like Swayze and Demi Moore and Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just a la by himself, like just jerking it onto a potter's <laughs> yes. nut for sauce flying everywhere. <laughs> Spin art. <laughs> Song is still the same, though. Song is still the same. <laughs> And, and by the way, if you thought Muhammad's hell descriptions were bad, wait until you hear his heaven descriptions. He basically describes it as a dinner party with non-alcoholic beer where everybody laughs about the people who used to doubt their religion. I I, I would take the overcooked soup of damnation, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, but hey, this is where we learn that, quote, and this is my version, and with them are the large-eyed ones with modest refraining glances, Fair, like a sheltered egg, end quote. What? That's the actual quote <laughs> yes. in my Quran. <laughs> Fair, like sexy. a sheltered egg. Is that like an egg that doesn't see the wire until it's <laughs> 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 like, I don't know what that is. Sounds like a poem I wrote for Madge. Anyway, um, <laughs> my, uh, my copy makes it sound like heaven is a circle of people uh, sitting under a bridge, passing around a bottle of like white Zinfandel from a gas station. I mean, <laughs> add seventy-two virgins, and that's a middle school party. I <laughs> <laughs> we also meet the Zakam tree in this chapter. I guess a- yeah. apparently it's a tree that grows in hell with a bunch of devil head fruits. 
Seems like something we could have spent a little more time on earlier, or later, maybe, or or later. Just don't. You know, just if you're going to have <laughs> the Zachary tree, let's that, let's linger that there. Right. The book. Let's talk about and, it. And, and can we I, talk about how thoroughly he fucks up the Jonah story right after this? By the way, he has Jonah as this like righteous dude who is following God's orders and was saved by like. Read the fucking story, bro. It's 686 words long. Have somebody read it to you. <laughs> this is Muhammad's version of like, I looked at the front cover and read the back cover of Where the Red Fern Grows for my book report. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be a shoebox diorama with just like a fern spray painted red, and, like a G.I. Joe with Jonah written on it, and a goldfish snack. <laughs> Again, I'm in. Wait, then he knocks down Christianity in one fell swoop by asking if you've ever seen a female angel. That's right. Not sure how that all adds up, but what? for whatever it's worth, I have not indeed seen a female angel. Okay, but but hold on, though. I, I got to jump in here. Um, I remember a time when I was looking through a, a girly magazine, and there's my homeroom angel on the pages <laughs> in between. <laughs> my blood ran cold. My memory had just been sold. sold. My angel was the centerfold. Oh, my well, angel was the centerfold. So, <laughs> just in the last two segments, the Quran got debunked by, uh, let's think about it, three little pigs, <laughs> a nine-year-old rape victim, and now Jay Giles band. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, not a great song. Thing you'd find in Andy Wilson's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready. Okay, they, yeah, right, right, for deportation. And with all of that important <laughs> wisdom out of the way, we pass over the halfway mark of today's reading and get to Surah 38, which is titled Sad, but not in that way, I guess. <sighs> no, no, it doesn't make any sense. So we start with a new rephrasing of Muhammad's only apologetic. This time he says, nobody in history has ever believed that I was the messenger of God. And where are all the people in history? Dead. That's what they didn't believe. If he were alive today, Muhammad would be the healthiest president <laughs> ever elected. I was thinking the same shit. Right? And if you want a clear idea how stupid Muhammad is, consider what passes for wisdom in his mind, right? So he tells the story about how wise David was. And he, he, here's his example. Like, two guys show up. Guy A has 99 sheep. Guy B only has one. And the guy with 99 sheep is like, I want his sheep too. David says, nope, that wouldn't be fair. That is wisdom to this <laughs> nose flosser. And what's worse, in my version, the guy's like, my brother convinced me to give him my sheep, hey, well, right now yeah. I want it back. And David's like, yeah, you seem like you're great with sheep. You <laughs> oversold how smart this story is. I did. <laughs> and, I rounded up. And the Saudi version specifically mentions that David doesn't even listen to the guy with all the sheep after the first right. one. Right. Who, first of all, sounds like a job creator, mm -hmm. honestly. But more importantly... <laughs> He was probably about to give a really good explanation if I had to get, like, listen, this guy was literally fucking the sheep. <laughs> uh, not going to get into the details. Give it back. But but he's going to rape the sheep again. La, la, la. Give it back. <laughs> Sheer no evil, see no evil. I'm David. He also rewrites the Job story so that Satan takes all the blame for evil shit that God does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they added a domestic abuse theme that I did not remember. <laughs> uh, apparently, Job... Ask God, God for help because Satan was torturing him, right? So God said, like, fine, here's a bundle of sticks. Just beat up your wife and stop complaining. That's <laughs> in this book. They added that. That's, yeah. They, that, that they did. And if you were just thinking to yourself, man, sure has been a while since we heard the story of Satan refusing to bow to Adam. Fear not, as clearly Muhammad was thinking the same thing. <sighs> and I'd love to add some commentary on Surah 39 as well, but absolutely nothing is said in it. This is the toughest so, reading we've ever fucking brutal. done yet. Uh, just seven pages of bad people go to hell, good people go to heaven, and I'm good people. Uh, not even a Moses flashback. It's no, bullshit. in this uh, one. Yeah. But hey, we learned that every kind of parable is in this book again, and that this is an Arabic book, quote, free from torturous wording, uh, end quote. Yeah. Not really sure. Yeah. Maybe going with a that. Ted Cruz definition. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to replace this segment with drowning me for 20 minutes every three weeks, I know that I and several people on Twitter will be up for it. <laughs> what? Is, is Milo back on Twitter? <laughs> oh, huh. All right, well, I guess we could basically skip over 39 and get on to our final chapter of the night, Sura 40, The Forgiver. And you're not going to get much more out of this story either. No, uh, and ju just to give you an example of how little is being said here, verse 4 opens up by saying, quote, only those who deny the truth dispute God's signs, end quote. <laughs> so basically, only the people that disagree with us 
argue about this shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> you think? But but this particular surah has an unusually high amount of like, don't be tricked into feeling sorry for mo- non-Muslims. So that's what makes it unique, I guess. Oh, okay. Right. Huh. But, but sure. what makes it unique is like, the way they prop it up is always like, God wouldn't damn them if he didn't know that they weren't going to believe in them. So like, it, so yeah. It's like the two-year-old <laughs> solving the trolley problem. He just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so basically, Allah is like a confused parent who doesn't understand how punishing works. He he catches all the atheists smoking, and he's like, "Okay, now you have to smoke this whole pack." Mm-hmm. And we're like, yep. oh, "Oh, fuck! Wow, that was that was awful. Uh, we're totally going to stop smoking and be Muslim." Ron, he says, "No, no, you you just live in a European airport lounge from now on. There's, <laughs> there's no useful purpose to my actions. You just all smoke now." I have no follow-up. Where was that parable, guys? He also keeps specifically condemning people who dispute God's message with no authority. And I'm dying to know what the fuck that means. Yeah, right? Who does have that authority? <laughs> Can you apply for a card or something? Do I need a license? Yeah, like, a, like a double O kind of thing, maybe? I don't know. Right. I'll look into it. Well, yeah, and if you want to speed up the process, I think there might be a gun show loophole. <laughs> I think we need to ask the world's top atheist. <laughs> Pam Geller? Is that <laughs> No, 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 she died. She died. <laughs> <laughs> we also get the 50th contradictory explanation of how babies are made here. And I only bring it up because after the Stone Age embryology, it says, and God made you an infant and then he made you an old person, except when he killed you young. There's that, of course. This could not more clearly be thinking out loud. Well, to, to the extent that there was thinking involved. Sure. Right, sure. Yeah. The Quran will fix it in post. And hey, they have. Yeah, they they have. have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nobody down there. points out the loopholes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know that guy everyone knows who like he doesn't know how to play whatever game. He always tries to jump in on jokes and it's just like Hitler rape abortion. It's, no, no. <laughs> this entire book reads like a Muslim version of that guy trying to make up his own like Chuck Norris memes about a lot. <laughs> 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 Dicks up for Aisha, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> also, we get a little more detail on our hell attire, which is good. I've been wondering what I should wear. So apparently we're all going to have iron collars. So, you know, dress accordingly, I guess. Right, right. right. Yeah, going to be super Detox awkward when I show up with my own collar and I'm just like, ooh, is that one sub shop? And the guy's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> This one's creeping me out. Cut it out. Get, get the ball out of your mouth. It's just collars. It's just collars. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't mind admitting it's getting harder and harder to excise dick jokes from this asinine jabberwocky. Yeah. But damn it, audience, you are worth it. And if you guys need some good news, uh, we're more than two thirds of the way through these segments and more than three quarters of the way through this book. Do you sound like a doctor listing off all the kinds of cancer his patient doesn't have first? That's a good idea, though. You <laughs> should. Nice. You should do that. I'm trying. Nice. Here's the diseases you might have had that I fucked away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? That's enough to get you canonized by the Catholics. <laughs> also, you're pregnant. <laughs> Before we master the gift tonight, I wanted to thank Kevin from the Left of the Valley podcast, both for providing this week's Canadian Farnsworth quote and for bringing Eli Bosnick on for a chat about all things humor. Of course, if you'd like to hear that conversation, you'll find a link on the show notes for this episode. Also want to remind you that your time is running out to get your tickets to see us live in Manchester, England, QED, October 14th to the 16th, live recording again, plus a speaker list that you probably would have wanted to pay to see anyway. You'll find links for tickets on those show notes as well. Anyway, that's all the blast movie we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend God Awful Movies debuting at 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. Obviously, this show would be like sex without an orgasm if I didn't thank Heath for all the um, something other than orgasms, as far as you know. I also need to thank the lovely Lucinda Illusions for not faking all those orgasms, as far as you know. And I also want to thank Eli for not mailing me any more of his orgasms, as far as I know. also need to give a huge thanks to Andrew Torres of the Opening Arguments podcast for playing along with us tonight. But most of all, of course, I need to thank this week's most erotic earthlings, Neil Hal, Ben, John, Kyler, Jeff, Coronzone, Eo, and Caffeine, Yarrow, Pastor Timothy, Fee, Wesley, Matthew, Annie, Cameron, and the Skeptic Smash Talk podcast. Neil Hal, Ben, John, Kyler, and Jeff, whose ejaculations give Enceladus Geyser Envy, Coronzone, Eo, and Caffeine, Yarrow, and Pastor 
Mr. Timothy, who would together form Voltron if they wanted to be a little bit less formidable, and Fee, Wesley, Matthew, Annie, Cameron, and the Skeptic Smash Talk podcast, who are so cool James Inhofe wants to carry him into the Senate to disprove global warming. Together, these 17 superlatively splendid, surpassingly sexy, sublimely sympathetic, strikingly seductive, sagaciously smart, secular, sacrifice some species to secure supplemental sacrilegious scathing this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the sensitivity, savings, and swordsmanship it takes to give us money, but if you think you're up to the challenge, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended edition of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but your shape-shifting lizard overlords won't let you donate money to podcasts, you can also help us a ton by fighting a dragon to save us from a tall tower, or giving us a five-star review on iTunes, whichever's easier on you. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by yours truly, and yes, I did have my permission. I will forever have the recording of Andrew saying dicks out for Harambe. That is all I needed. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.